Okay, so let's start. Good afternoon, good evening. We are going to start the... Okay, that's uh, as usual, I go through the uh, schedule. Today, I will call it uh, Confucian Revolution. Okay, so that's, we are going to focus on the first century okay, in China, what's going on and therefore, and the next week, basics, we will still focus on the first century, but on the second part of the Han Dynasty. So a little bit later than the first century. So that, I think that during this time, China or in that region has a lot of change in uh, philosophical, intellectual, you know, cultural, uh, a political change. And usually in, not only in Chinese uh, scholar, also in the Western scholar probably not pay enough attention on that. So I probably want to spend at least the two uh, uh, week on this one, and which will be sort of a continuous, but uh, stand independent, independently. And the week after June 18, Sashi is going to talk about Hinduism, non-dualism and uh, uh, poverty. So, and then uh, I just talked to Pin yesterday about the, uh, the end of the June presentation. Uh, he's going to talk about the Taoism utopia. That's it. Remember, that's in the fourth century and China is in the disintegration. So there's a, uh, a lot of country, it's a turmoil. So we will see how uh, Taoism utopian come out you know, during that time. So we're going to move on. So that's our schedule. So today I decided to call this one as a Confucian revolution. So uh, I assume if you know, or you sort of know what's the teaching about the Confucianism. Uh, then we will see how Confucianism uh, put in work. What does it happen? So before we start, let's see the timeline. So we usually focus, spend a lot of time in the Hanzhui school or so-called the six famous school of philosophy in the spring and the autumn period or the warring state, which is about 500 BC to about 200, 300 BC during that time. That's all you, the term you're familiar, right? Like Confucius, Mencius, uh, Legalism, Taoism, uh, the school of names, the Yin Yang school, they all popular during that time. And then around the 200 BC, uh, the Qin dynasty, which he, they adopt the Legalian system, unite the entire China. I think two, uh, two weeks ago, uh, Alex has a presentation on the, how does the Qin Dynasty unite the entire China. And uh, as you may know, Qin Dynasty only lasts for 15 years, then come with the Han Dynasty. And I think the, uh, last month, I have a section talk about the Dong Zhong Su, who is the uh, Confucianism, and basically make a Confucianism as a orthodoxy thought for the Han Dynasty, because during that time, it's a one country, one society, so they believe we should have one thought. So that's the situation. And today we are going to move on to a little bit late to the first century, that's the end of the Western Han Dynasty. There's another revolution happened, which is the Xin Dynasty come out, which is worshiped the Confucian, uh, Confucianism. And he built the uh, dynasty, but again, only lasts for 15 years and uh, failed. Then the Han dynasty that <coughs> got the restoration, so lasts another 200 years. So if you look at the timeline, you will see the Han dynasty lasts for about 400 years from 200 BC to 200 CE. And with 15 years interruption, so Xin Dynasty. So we are going to look at during this, uh, we will spend a little time talking about this as a comparison and they're talking about this area. So uh, this week, we're going to talk about this time before the Xin Dynasty. And the next week, we are going to talk about after Xin Dynasty, uh, Xin Dynasty 
uh, <clears throat> during this period of time. So I think this time is important. So after that, there's the three kingdom. Okay, so uh, that will move on later. So that will be uh, 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 probably next month, we'll start to talk about this part. So that's around the timeline. But if you look at the map, Okay, that's, I take out this map from the internet and then uh, this one is the time around the first century. You can see here is a Han dynasty and at the same time that's the Roman empire. So if you take the global view in this world, uh, we have the two dynasties equally huge size, right? One um, Han dynasty in Asia, one is Roman empire in Asia. But, uh, during this presentation, I'd like everyone to think about these two questions. Of course, we don't have an answer, but I have a two questions and you can think about in your mind. If you look at the map, the Europe today is many, many countries, but China still at least thinking about it's one country. So the important, okay, how important of the unity in Chinese history. So doesn't matter how, big, how much time uh, the China is in one country or in many countries, but unity being a concept. So how important this one? I, I would like everyone to think of this one without answer it. Second thing about the Confucianism, does it work or does it work? So that's the two questions you can put in your mind and we probably don't have an answer. We probably don't have time to discuss, but that would be the good question to think about. It. So let's start for today and then uh, I will spend, probably spend the uh, first hour, we're talking about the early Han Dynasty, which is from Qin unification. That's the first time uh, uh, Qin Dynasty got, uh, the first time China got united as one country. And I think uh, Alex make a presentation, talk about this. But today I'm going to repeat this, kind, this period of time but focus more on the uh, thought, on the philosophy part. So <clears throat> again, this one is for the people not familiar, okay, with Chinese philosophy, but if you're familiar, you probably know, okay, let's talk about Confucian, Confucius. And the Confucius are two disciples, which I talk about disciples, uh, I would say follower, basically they are, 100 or 200 later than Confucius, so they don't meet each other, but basically they claim they are following Confucius teaching. So one, according to the book, uh, the Feng Yu Lan's uh, 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 a short history of the Chinese philosophy, okay, he claimed uh, actually there's two school under Confucianism. One is idealistic, which is mentions, and another one is realistic. Uh, school and then who is Xunzi. <clears throat> and if you want to make it simple to separate these two person, uh, Mencius claim human nature is good, which become an orthodoxy thinking over the history. And then Xunzi, who also a Confu Confucian scholar, but he claimed human nature is bad. So we need the education, we need the training to bring the good to make people good. Okay, so that's his teacher. So he has a two famous students. One is Han Feizi, one is Li Si. Both become uh, legalism, famous legalism. And uh, both work for the first emperor of the Qin dynasty. So both of them work for the Qin Shi Huang. That's the uh, first emperor of China. So Han Fei is a scholar and uh, the Li Si, is the prime minister of the Qin dynasty. So let's talk about Han Fei. <clears throat> he is a starter, as, uh, a starter, so he cannot speak well, so he write another book, and he worked for Qin <clears throat> dynasty as a uh, probably consultant or whatever, but uh, we will see his classmate, Li Si, is the prime minister, and Li Si got jealous, so put him in jail and kill him. So, but his writing, his policy has been used, uh, adopted for the, uh, by the Qin dynasty. So uh, I think uh, I introduced this writing, uh, chapter 49, about five termites many, many times. And we 
we don't have the chance to read from the beginning to the end. Uh, I have promised we are going to read this one, but not today. Uh, I just bring the, some simple idea about this one uh, because the Feng Yu Lan, uh, uh, this book, Feng Yu Lan's writing, to talk about this. He talk about in the state of enlightened, enlightened ruler, there's no literature of book or records, but the law serve as teaching. There are no saying of the sage kids, but the official act, the officials act as teachers. So that's a very famous policy. Okay, he suggests is you don't have to read, learn from the uh, ancient sage king. Okay, you don't have to read the book as a regular people. Only thing you need to read is law. Only you don't need a teacher. The only teacher you need is the government officials. Okay, so he's writing on five termites. I just quick summarize. So this five termites is not good for school. Okay, scholar, he means the Confucian scholar, the moral uh, politician, rule intelligentsia, this kind of people, uh, sophist, okay, and the knight errant, okay, people who avoid public service usually means that people get sick, handicap. Uh, uh, probably sometimes means uh, rich people because they're doing business, so they travel around. Okay, so that's why he don't want the merchant artisan because these people doesn't stay in the uh, land, they move around. So Han Fei's suggestion, they don't want to have this kind of people. That's he, his suggestion to for the good of the state. And we call this one the legalism. So uh, Qin Shi Huang, I think the Alex in two weeks ago talked about him. He's the first empire. Okay, his name is Ying Zheng. Okay, and then uh, uh, Ying Zheng, and he being claimed. Usually, history we call him uh, Qin Shi Huang. Okay, that means the first emperor and of the uh, Qin state. So, uh, so he. Uh, Ascending, uh, ascend, <coughs> ascending the song at 13 years old, at age 20, okay, he controlled the court, okay, take the power before, uh, for the seven years, uh, the Lü Bu Wei, the prime minister, taking care of the country. But at the 20 years, he killed the uh, killed Lü Bu Wei and the, himself uh, uh, take the control of the state. And 19 years later, he annexed six other states. So he ended the warring state period, unite China, okay, with from 20 years to 39 years. And take another 10 years, he died. Okay, so in general, we can say he's quite successful uh, doing what he needs to do, which is unite the entire country, as he did. So after he created the country, actually he, uh, country. So remember, during that time, uh, Han Fei already been killed. Li Si, as a prime minister, has a lot of power. So when the country got united, there's no more different uh, 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 state. Okay, only country is Qin. Okay, so right now they face the uh, situation. I think a lot of uh, history will tell you, and which is true. Okay, he do a lot of things to unite the entire country. For example, he makes sure uh, everybody writing in the same form of writing, because in the warring state, different state, they have the different form of writing. So Qin united, and he makes sure all the measurement in the same way, just like in Roman, they start to build road. And he makes sure the car, the width of the car have to be in the same width, right? That's important because you can travel okay, around the country. Okay, so that's important. So since we are a philosophical group, so I like to talk about more on the philosophical thought. So how about people thought, right? Uh, the, all the political uh, policy are talking about like uh, uh, building road, building the Great Wall, and then uh, unite the measurement system, yeah, the currency, everything. But there's another thing have to deal with about people's thought. Because before this time, uh, the situation is we so-called 
Hanzhui school. So that means they have a different kind of thought. So Li Si, as a prime minister, he had submitted a memorial to the emperor, Qin Shi Huang. That's the quote uh, I copied from the, uh, the book. Actually, it's kept in the record of Sima Qian's uh, great historian. So <clears throat> of old, the world was scattered and in confusion. Men valued what they had privately studied and criticized what their superior had established. At present, your majesty, which is Qin Shi Huang, has united the world. Yet there are those who with their private teaching mutually abet each other and discredit the institution of laws and instruction. If such conditions are not prohibited, the imperial power will decline and the partisan will form, which you talk about will have many, many schools. So Li Si at that time already realized, you know, you cannot just physically unite the entire country. Mentally, you have to unite everybody together. So he won't have one thought. So that's his suggestion. Uh, in the ancient royal court, usually the prime minister will submit uh, the memorial to the emperor. And emperor will read it, listen, and uh, say, yes, then become an a order, then they will start to execute. Okay, so that's the process. So this is not end here. He has a real suggestion on that. I make it at some point, and then I'm going to read it. You will see how that's been executed. Okay, so first, all the old history records, which are not belong to Qin, should be burned. So you will see after this time, the historical record of destroyed, only the history of Qin state. Second one, except government library, the collection of books of literature, history, uh, his, uh, uh, philosophical writing should be handed over to officer, officers and burned. Okay, so you have to no more library only government can have library. Those who privately discuss literature and the history should be pub pub uh, publicly executed. Okay? You are not allowed to discuss the literature and the history like our meetup. Okay? Those who criticize present government by comparing it with the old government should be exterminated of the entire family. Okay, so if you criticize government, it's not only yourself in trouble, your whole family is in trouble. The officer who failed to report any violation should be charged with the same crime committed by the violator. So you, have to re you are responsible to report, okay. Those officers who don't burn books within 30 days will be punished with tattooing the face and the laboring. Basically, they want the government you know, to finish this job within 30 days. Otherwise, they will tattoo your face and send you to labor. And basically, they ask you to build uh, the city wall or great wall. There is some exception. Book of medicine, divination, pomology, I think which means the fruit, fruit tree can be spelled. Okay, I don't know why it specifically meant the fruit tree, but basically that's the, the text said, okay. Medicine, divination, and uh, uh, pomology, okay, can be spelled. Anyone who want to study should study the laws and the learn from the officer. So that's the Han Fei's thinking, Han Fei's thinking. So this one got executed, okay. And the situation has happened. So, and that's the famous situation. Uh, a lot of people will talk about this one. It's a very uh, important event and the burning of books and the burying of the scholars. So what happened according to historical account is the burning of books and the burying of scholars refer to the uh, purported burning of texts on the 213 BC and the life burial of 460 Confucian scholars in 212 BC. Uh, by the Chinese emperor Qin Shi Huang. And then this was allergic to destroy the, all the historical treaties and hundred school of thought. And with the goal of straightening the official, official Qin governing thought legally. So only legalism 
okay, state and everybody is no, uh, all the texts are destroyed. So that's the first part of the history. And then of course, you know, after uh, uh, this one, it doesn't work actually. It, you know, turned out it only Qin Dynasty only survived for 15 years. So I will take about a, a short break now before I go to the next session. And that's been a few minutes. And uh, if you have a question, please ask question or if you have some comment and uh, please, yeah. So we have a fear, fear runs you for a while. So fear and uh, James. Uh, fear, are you? It went dark. Are you able to speak? I... You are muted. He's out. <laughs> uh, okay. okay. Okay, great. Great to hear from you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my thought is that it seems like there's a kind of an important strategy about standardization. Okay. Not only the standardization of materials, which is necessary to unify the physical transportation of things and moving of things. But the unification, I shouldn't say unification, the standardization of ideas, which means there's going to be a unity, both in the writing and in the whatever. Uh, I presume <laughs> that's, a, that's actually a very deep uh, structure that, uh, that, that seems to me as... Well, I hesitate to say totalitarian, but but I I, I will say that it, it, it seems to be centralized and sort of top down. That's all I wanted to ask. Yeah, it is, and it's not the only time. It's the first time, and then we will see. You know, in the Han Dynasty, the same thing happened, but in a different way. So that's the purpose of today. Uh, uh, James and Alex, James, please. Yeah, I can see how the. Um... I can see how this relates to uh, uh, the American book, uh, <laughs> Fahrenheit 451. And uh, it's, uh, it that's, can't be anything else but an intent to, um, to be totalitarian. And what, what was really the role of, uh, of the Chinese emperor, but to be a totalitarian ruler, uh, to improve the uh, diversified rule of, um, of aristocrats and uh, kings, so uh, so that was I think the that's kind of like uh, historically I suppose that's the principle that's at work here is uh, do you want a totalitarian um, benefit or do you want um, the uh, kind of more abstract um, random rule a uh, localized rule, um, but. Uh, can you, Jason, can you tell us what's wrong with pomology that that was on the list? No, no, that's wrong because that's what to save. Okay. So they want to accept, right? I hope I make it clear. Okay. Uh, okay. Oh, Ooh, sorry. The medicine definition and the pomology can be spelled. So they oh. don't earn this one. So I think they are not, they are totally utilitarian, right? So the Confucius teaching, Taoism teaching, Tao Te Ching, and that's totally nonsense. Only thing is divination, medicine, okay, uh, pomology. Okay, I think this is tree, how to plant a tree. I think original text. Basics, agriculture. That makes sense. Okay, so useful knowledge. Not like, uh, for example, our meetup, totally useless. We just comprehend this, comprehend that, talk about this. No. Okay, talk about agriculture. Copy of a growing tree, okay, uh, making money. That's more important. So I think that's the purpose. Okay, okay. so uh, we have Alex and Phil again. Uh, Alex, please. Uh, Alex, are you there? Okay, I will wait for you when we have uh, Phil. Phil, you go first. Yeah, 
You can you are muted. Okay. But but okay, now I got the signal. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask this question since uh, James brought up totalitarian and I hesitate to use that term. Was it a cause or an effect? Because it seems like that it was effect that ended up to be a cause because you know, do you want the warring states? A fearful of the warring states because too much diversity, you know, let's put it that way, leads into uh, chaos and eternal uh, struggle uh, and everything be, become unsettled. So that if it's a cause, then I could sort of understand it and be for a little bit more lenient on it. If it's just an effect, I mean, no, I mean, if it's a cause, I'm less whatever, but if it's effect, then it's just responding to the condition that you found yourself in to try to adjust to it. Would you I, say something I, about that? Yeah, okay. I think I'd like to answer your question in this way. You know, I think they do it by, because they never control a big country. And think about without today's technology, right? Mm -hmm. Something happened on the East, it takes five days to know, okay? So a lot of things is dangerous because they really don't know what's going on, you know, on the south part, on the north part, you know. And then, so I think they want to do is let's control the people. Don't they move, don't they move around? Don't they then talk about our government? They just work, okay? I think that's the idea, okay? So uh, because of lack of technology. Okay, uh, we, we, that's a, the big question anyway. Yeah, uh, Kevin, and uh, hold on, uh, Alex, are you able to talk or you? Alex, there's a message from Alex in the chat. He's, he's yeah. asking for it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Um, regarding the burning of the books um, and, uh, kill, uh, and, the, and the killing of the scholars, because later on, there are other evidence that suggests that the reason that happened might not just be he wants to, uh, you know, kill them. But the burning of the books is important for centralization because uh, Qin Dynasty is a highly bureaucratic government. Everything has to be in record. So, word language must be standardized. You know, I, I hope you guys understand. Like, you're, you're managing a whole big country, right? So, you must standardize communication. You must. You know, well, the way they do it is more drastic. They just burn all the books that have all the different writings. But um, it wasn't really just like to destroy all the other thoughts. It was also to standardize the writing so they can actually communicate and have, you know, wow. uh, 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 you know between the government and, uh, and the people. So that's one thing. And the second thing, um, about the killing of the scholars was also because they were they were um, planning a, a uprising because all these scholars you know they are not happy that their um, th their school of thoughts were not being adopted so you know try to think about I I don't think I don't think he was trying to be a totalitarian or something I think. You know, later on, there are a lot of dispute about this, uh, what happened, this history, that it was not, it was really just about these people were trying to create a rebellion because they have different opinions. And in order to appease the rebellion, you know, re the rebellions, what, what, what can you do? You know, he just unified the country. He's not going to let, some, you know, these people to, to create other problems for him. And therefore, that's why he. So it's about unity. I, I I don't want to think like it was totalitarian. Maybe yeah, he was a very severe, uh, you know, uh, emperor. But if you look at the view of unity, that's just something I would call the necessary evil kind of to, um, you know, unite the whole nation. Thank okay. You. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Yeah, so uh, yeah, a, a lot of things is disputable, okay? So what I did, I based one from, uh, principle, okay? That's I, I know everything is disputable. So whatever I put in there, 
I basics I take from the historical account. But of course you can argue, is the historical account accurate or not? Yeah, that's another question. Yeah, because I based on the Sima Chen's writing, his uh, uh, writing. But you say, oh no, his Sima Chen is lying because he didn't get the, of course he doesn't know. And uh, he based on some sources and he is a Confucianism, a Confucianism. So is he biased? Of course he's biased. So he may discredit Qin a lot, but that's the, the principle I base, I base on the, so that's why I always put, I try my best to put the original uh, text on that. And then, and of course you can have a different opinion and that's fine. So uh, that's have to move on. Then let's have a uh, case. Jason, make on. a quick, this is Zach, uh, just a quick point. It okay. does draw, do draw parallels when uh, the movement of, uh, and again, I'm not <laughs> comparing to it, but when Hitler was, uh, <laughs> during the Crystal Night, was trying to burn the books of Hugo and Voltaire and <laughs> tell, telling everybody those opinions don't matter. Obviously, we're talking about, you know, maybe 20 centuries later, but it's interesting the parallels that uh, Hitler was trying to create uh, a kind of his only view um, of the, uh, you know, fascist movement. So I just, that's a general thought, just, you know, uh, can you comment on that? I okay, mean, so, uh, Zex, okay, that, let me do this, okay. Yeah, uh, the, uh, I try not to take the, my position on everything. Okay, I try to do my best to present what it is, right? So everybody are open to discuss. Oh, that's a, ter 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 a totalitarian. It's terrible. Oh, no, he's evil, like Hitler. All you want to say, no, he has a higher good on that. That's all fine because we don't know, you know, unless you know we put him in trial. On trial, otherwise we have no idea. So uh, welcome to different opinion, but uh, uh, let's uh, uh, make sure we follow the schedule. We have uh, Kevin, CK, and. Uh, uh, Karen, and then I have to move on. So, Kevin, please. Uh, Kevin, are you, are you Leo? Um, you, unmute him, please. Okay, I think everybody can unmute yourself, right? Can you? Okay, hold on, let me. Oh, you cannot unmute. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me... Now it's okay, I guess. And you have to give permission, you know, let people want to yeah, speak. I, I, I read that you, <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can unmute. Now you can hear me, right? Yeah, 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 please. Go. Yeah, I, I first appreciate, uh, you know, your effort, Jason. And I like your presentation, like present what we have from text. And uh, my a little bit is, uh, please try not to use binary thinking. That's the problem, you know, I, I try, you know, use the uh, high level is, is speaking. Uh, back to this is a 2,000 year ago, and 2,200, even more than that. Then that's time from the country previous from 200 states in China, then uh, reduced to seven, then become to one, the Qin dynasty. <coughs> so during this process, if you are the, the uh, empire, what are you going to do? What did you learn? So we need, it could be one voice, one thing, unification is so important. One thing, um, maybe the tech ministry you guys mentioned before, they, they also want to contribute about it, uh, the, uh, the, say, uh, uh, the horse track, they have one track, basically one size. <clears throat> it, it used to be it's a different, I cannot go to your side. And also a nice uh, you know, book, use the same like uh, character. That's why we can read it now from a different, even the uh, different uh, dialect or different uh, traditional Chinese or simple Chinese. They still can read this. As another one I'm going to share with you is that year, what's the literacy? It's a lot less than 1% could, could it be. I didn't find, I have used, used to be how the search find, uh, but now lost. Lead, which means people don't care, you know, cannot read. So listen, people different voice, either they, you know, pull around whole country, different accent. And a, and a third one I want to point, 
fill up the belly in dough. It's so important for ordinary people. It's not just for rich. It's for about the ordinary people. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, CK, please. Hello, hi. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, follow up a, a little on what Alex said previously. Firstly, I uh, appreciate her sort of defense of the Qin Empire, which is uh, very, uh, I guess, it is, it's, it's, a, it's a view that is uh, quite uh, fairly recent. Uh, you know, because previously in Chinese history, is the Xin Dynasty has been portrayed as really evil and, and terrible and bad. Because history, as we know, uh, is always written by the victors. And the victors, although Qin was an, a victor, he uh, it didn't last for more than fifteen years, and it was superseded by so-called uh, other empires, especially the Han and the rest, who are who are who raised Confucianism to a different pedestal. So uh, and, and also. When, when Liu Bang became the, well, entered Xianyang, he had this, uh, this, this pact with the people that they're, they're, they just have three laws and not that many laws. It's called Yue Fa, Yue Fa San Zhang. And that, that's another, I think, uh, development whereby the Qin is increasingly being blamed for a lot of, like, uh, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of like, situations like the burning of books and the bury burying of the scholars without looking at its historical context and the reasons. I also like to, to make a, a kind of a more modern comparison. If you look at France, like France is a, a state that is very, I wouldn't say totalitarian, but it's, it prides itself on its unitary character. So the French language has the uh, defender as a defender in the Académie Française. So all the French uh, written script has to be standardized and they have to be uh, uh, spoken in a, in, in, a, in a way, although there are regional variations, but there is always standard French. And previously that wasn't the case because uh, French, there are so many regional dialects in France and French only became the, 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 the true national language by the act of state by the propagation by the, uh, the, the French state. So in some ways, it's not that different from the Qin Empire in wanted to standardize a lot of uh, uh, areas, uh, weights and measurements, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the, the Jacobins also standardized weights and measures, measurements during the French Revolution. So in that sense, it's very comparable in my view. And I just want to toss this out for uh, our audience to think about. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, CK. Yeah, let's hear about what Karen wants to say. Please make a point. Yeah, uh, I'll try. I'll try to be quick. I, I mean, I think people have said this, but it could be both, right? It could have been totalitarian and driven by an understandable desire for unification after a very troubled period. Um, so, but given the fact that the dynasty only lasted the 15 years. And from what you've said in the past, part of the reason why it only lasted such a short time is people thought it was too harsh. Um, and that the next dynasty seems to have also focused on unification, but, but with a softer touch. I'm wondering if you think that the, the harshness of the, the unification measures was part of the fact that this dynasty was following the more pessimistic of the branches. Um, so it had a more pessimistic, view of human nature and do you think that that shaped maybe the harshness of the policies that they were trying to save people from themselves with some pretty tough measures you know the, the belief that humans are are fundamentally bad and need need shaping yeah uh thank you you make a good point but i don't think i will have an answer but uh, probably nobody has an answer because that's a big question for <laughs> Uh, it's a harsh, harshness. And then I'm going to move on. I bring on another section. We talk about Qin Dynasty. Then we talk about Han Dynasty. Okay. So we can make a story. I think you can imagine what kind of story happened, right? After people revoke and blah, 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 blah. And then some guy called Liu Bang, he built another new dynasty called Han. Okay. So that's a typical story in China, in Europe, every place come out in the same way. So let's focus on what Han Dynasty focuses. He faced the same situation, right? Because let's look at the map. 
So during that time, the Han Dynasty, that's, that's the basics about the territory of the Qin Dynasty. So uh, compared to today's China, that's they have a pretty big, good size, okay, during that time, 200 BC. And then, of course, when you just uh, establish the other kids, uh, it's take a few, take about 80 years, right? Uh, at least all the emperor, okay? So first from Liu Bang, okay, that's the founder. He, uh, please pay attention on the age. He was 54, 60. Then when he died, his wife, okay, become the emperor, uh, mm. title in charge, okay? Uh, then Liu Heng, then Liu Qi, okay? So that's basics, they practice Taoism, okay? So they have everybody, kind of the rest, not too much interruption. That's the idea of uh, uh, the policy, the official government. government. Then to the Wu Di, uh, his name is Liu Che. Uh, prepare attention, he stayed in Ren for 54 years. It's a long time, okay. Uh, uh, he uh, uh, ascend uh, the throne at 15 years old and died at 70 years old. So we will see this one is being considered uh, one of the greatest emperor in Chinese nationalism uh, thinking. If you want to see China as a nation, uh, therefore the nationalism thinking, uh, Wu Di is one of the great. And another one is Tang Taizong, that's on the fifth or sixth century. So these two considering it through the history being viewed as the great, greatest uh, emperor, kind of like the Peter the Great this kind of, or these 14, this kind of people. So uh, that's quickly, I think I talk about this one and that's quickly go over what Wu Di, which is whose, his name is Liu Che, uh, what he did, okay, during these 54 years. And I put uh, uh, Julius Caesar, okay, because they kind of overlap. He's like half century younger than uh, Liu Che, Wu Di, and then uh, he, almost the same time, okay, during that time. So you can kind of, you know, put your mindset on the two different worlds. So Dong Zhongshu is older. I'm going to talk about Dong Zhongshu. I talked about last month, and I'm going to go a little bit more detail on him. So uh, Liu Che, he was born, at, and then that's over 15 years, and, uh, and he died. Okay, what he did, he uh, started the war, okay, Han and the Xiongnu, which is Han, or some people call it Hans, okay? Uh, the war with the uh, Proto Mongolian, okay? And uh, he invaded uh, Korean Peninsula. He uh, conquered Nan Yue, which is called Hong Kong, Macau, Vietnam, okay? I think we talk about this one. And then he died at the age of 69. He did a lot of work, and basically, after him, China became a really united country, one country, okay? So if you remember what happened in Qin Shi Huang, okay? So during this time, they are facing the same problem, right? Right now it's one country. We are safe on our boundary. And what we need to do, okay, this one. So that's a scholar, Confucian scholar, uh, Dong Zhong Su. Okay. So I would like to repeat, I think I read this one before, uh, from uh, Dr. Hardy, he writes the great minds of the Eastern intellectual tradition. I think his uh, description as Dong Zhongshu is the best I have ever seen. Okay, he called him eclecticism. Okay, so uh, uh, I copy, I read the last time, but I think I will read one more time. The fifth Han Emperor Wu Di, okay, Liu Che, okay, in act education reform that returned Confucian thought to the fall on the advice of Dong Zhongshu, a minister, a philosopher, and one of Sima Qian's teacher. Sima Qian is the great historian and all of our history before, Chinese history before 200 uh, BC or 150 BC is written by him. He collect all the information, he writes it. So a lot of source I draw from his writing. So, uh, so he is the teacher of Sima Qian. So you can see, you know, it's a lot of bias, uh, bias uh, uh, favor the Confucian think thinking because Dong Zhongshu is a Confucian uh, scholar and his student Sima Qian write the history. 
Okay. Don's idea stress synthesis and the unity. Okay, remember the unity. I like everybody to think about how important the unity. Okay, instead of thinking about how good is that good or bad, but you know you can think about how important of unity in Chinese thought. He argued that heaven, earth, and man, humankind were intimately connected and proposed a Marcos, uh, macrocosmic and the microcosmic model of the universe, that the human body is a model of the cosmos, supported by numerology. Dong, Dong Zhongshu's argument may seem silly from modern scientific perspective, but his point was that morality is based in the natural world. Heaven provides a model for human action and the Confucian human relationship. Emperor rule minister, father rule sons, husband rule wife. Sorry for the ladies, but that's what he said. His philosophy offered a rationale for strong centralized rule and a synthesized, synthesized, uh, synthesized Taoism, Degoism, Naturism, which is Yin Yang school and Confucianism. If I have to make it simple, right? So basically, his philosophy is five element plus the yi jing, yin yang, this kind of thing, and as a fundamental metaphysical for the Confucius teaching. So that's the way he do it. And I think we do this one before, and then uh, I, this one kind of like a review on his uh, philosophy. And then I just will stop for a few minutes if you have any question or any comment, and then uh, please make it brief because we have to move on to the more important thing is uh, philosophy about him. Bill, please. Uh, you call this eclecticism, and I admit it is. I would, I would more likely call it revisionism. The revisionism of, uh, of Confucius. Okay, yeah. To a new structure. I mean, I think that's fusing it with, uh, you know, the emperor, the unified, to standardize Confucius in a structure uh, that collected other ideas and therefore revised Confucianism. Would you agree that that might be the case? I I I, I think that that's a good idea to call it. But the eclecticism is not my name. It's like from I copy from Dr. Hardy's. Yeah. But anyway, I thank you for this suggestion. And then, so you can start to see. What's the difference between Han Dynasty and the Qin Dynasty? Mm -hmm. How they they all face the same problem, and then they have the problem to how to unite not only physically but the thought, okay, the people, the thought of people. So that's Dong Zhongshu's idea, and the basis is the less legalism and the more Confucianism. Okay. So next few slides, I think I present most of them during the uh, last time I talk about Dong Zhongshu. So I probably will go a little bit quick and then uh, just make sure uh, for the people who are familiar, just kind of review. And for people not in this session, just get an idea. And we don't have to go the detail, why, how, all this kind, of, just make sure what it is, then we can move on. So important thing is the triad, okay? In, uh, heaven, earth, and the human being, uh, humankind. Okay, so uh, that's the important concept, and uh, this concept will run through the uh, history. So, man, both in his physiological and mental aspect, is a replica and a duplicate of heaven. As such, he is far superior to all other things of the world. Man, heaven, and the earth are the origin of all things. Heaven gives them birth. Earth give them a new, new, a, a nurture, a nourishment, and the man give them perfection. Okay, so remember perfection because that's a Confucian teaching. Okay. Perfectionism. How does man accomplish this perfectionism? Okay, it is done through Di, which is rituals, and Yue, which is music. Or in another way, in today's sense is civilization and the culture. So you can start to compare the difference between Confucius and teaching and the legals and teaching, not like only study the law, learn from the office, government officer. Okay, they talk about the civilization and the culture. 
So heaven, earth, and the man are related to each other, like the hands and the feet. United them, give the finished uh, the finished physical form, so no one of them may be dispensed. So, pray a human is part of the nature. That's kind of the thought. Okay. So again, he that's the perennial question in Chinese history. So theory of the human nature. Okay. So we would know. Uh, so his human nature, let me make it quick. Basically, he considered, I think this one is a good example, okay? So basically for the silk, uh, cocoon contains silk fiber, but yet it's not itself silk. Just like the egg contains the chicken, yet is not itself a chicken. So human has a seed of being good, okay? But not yet good. So you need culture, you need education. So that's his philosophy. Okay, so here is go a little bit more technical. I see fear, you have a hands up. Do you have a question or you have a comment? If you have a comment, let's do it today. A comment. Okay, can you wait until I finish this one? Okay, okay. So basics, uh, because he put, this one is not, if you are in the group, our Tuesday night uh, reading the Confucius uh, Analect, Okay, so this one is Confucius teaching, but he has, you can tell they have the strong flavor of the yin yang, the number, okay, five element, this kind of thing. So when he talk about document, he talk about five eminent Tao and the three eminent De, which is virtue. Okay. So that's his writing. Okay. There are five eminent Tao in the world. There are practice according to three virtues which is the, the five eminent Tao. Five eminent Tao basically talk about the major human relationship. In Chinese called Wu Lun, okay, uh, which uh, people still use it today, are those between emperor and the minister, between fathers and the son, between husbands and the wife, between elder brothers and the younger brothers, and uh, those belong to the interaction of friends. This is five, uh, uh, these five are eminent Tao in the world. And the wisdom and Ren, which is benevolence and the courage, these three are the eminent virtue. So he talk about, you know, virtue and the Tao. And then he go ag again, three major chord in the net. Okay, so that basically is so-called, so he pick up the three thing is important. Basically it's related to yin yang, one, uh, one rule over another one. So basically talk about the, uh, the, the emperor rule over the minister. Emperor is yang and the minister is yin. The father are yang, the son are yin, husband are yang, wife are yin. The three court of Tao of the true kinship can be found in the heaven. So everything will tie together with heaven. Then it get even more, okay? So, uh, since we have the five element, okay, metal, wood, water, fire, earth, each one will match with virtue. Okay, so righteousness match with metal, run bananas match with wood, wisdom match with water, and the uh, richer uh, match with fire, trustworthiness match with earth, and they all located uh, connect with different color different location, different series, and then you can go on and on with the Chinese medicine. Yeah, all network together. That's, that's the idea. So put heaven, earth, human, everything in the one, um, we will say metaphysical structure. So that's his idea, his structure. I think I uh, uh, put this one in the beginning of May. Okay, so you can uh, look at the, uh, uh, recording if you want to go more detail and this one kind of like uh, review on uh, this one. So uh, I will stop for a few minutes and then we can talk about this and, have, and then if you have any idea, any suggestion, then we will move on to what Dong uh, Su going to do you know, with this philosophy. So let's have uh, Phil, James and Kevin. Phil, please. Yeah, I, I think this is a great move. I mean, it, because I think, you know, you normally think of what 
the Qin Emperor did was to create a hierarchical structure that's top down. But what this did was to actually relate the hierarchical structure to a different level uh, in which these levels fit into each other in terms of levels of structure that is sort of uh, vertical in relationship to the horizontal structure uh, that is sort of spread horizontally. I think that that layering uh, actually creates uh, uh, not just a hierarchical structure, but a structure that is actually one level and another level that's higher in terms of the, the unity that is created. Uh, I think this, this was really a very practical compromise between the horizontal and vertical. And I, I think this really gives it a kind of a unity that I think went beyond harmony. <laughs> it was a unity of, of uh, almost a structuralism. Uh, a very, very, very interesting. Very oh. interesting. Thank you, Phil. Um, and I was suggest one thing when we compare, okay, so it's right, it's wrong. Uh, don't forget it's how many years ago? 2,300 years ago. Yeah. Okay, so it's a long time ago. Uh, it's unfair to compare with today's standard. But it would be fair if you want to compare with the Roman Empire or the Roman Empire okay. in that time, because they, I assume people are equally smart. I assume people are equally nice. I assume people are equally uh, handling the same technology. So uh, uh, that would be a bit more fair, in my opinion, uh, comparison, not with today's thing. OK, so let's have the James and the Kevin. James, please. Yeah, I was, uh, was going to ask you to defend this uh, this chart, uh, Jason. But uh, now that I've had a chance to read it for a while, I'm kind of uh, understanding the uh, yin yang logic and the um, and also the calendar aspect. Mm -hmm. So um, north, south, east, and west, not so much maybe, but the, yeah, yeah, the yin yang and the calendar kind of really appeal to me. Um, so uh, yeah. Chinese, uh, Chinese. Uh, I don't know. What, what would you call this? A, a type of Chinese logic, or what? What? How would you describe this in terms of philosophy? I mean, this kind of a calendar yin yang, this kind of thing. Yeah, it's, uh, to me, it's like there's a there's a yin yang. There's the calendar, the the yearly, the uh, seasons, right? They make sense. There's a there's a sequence to the seasons and a, and a circularity. Um, the uh, uh, taste real yeah. far out, you know. But but it, but on the other hand, you know, is is there is there a kind of like a, a description, a philosophical description for the kind of uh, this kind of logic, or is all? Am I kind of correct in relating it all to Taoism? Yeah, I I I think I to me, okay. If you ask me my personal opinion on this one, Sam, if you remember, or if you were in last week. Uh, in the presentation talk about divination, right? So the, you will find out they all related. So I can quickly reject this one as totally nonsense. Oh, that's just old stuff. We don't have. To. But another way I can think about way is that's a good mental exercise. Okay, that put you in different way of thinking. So just like if you, the kids ask me, oh, why are you spend so much to try to resolve the let's say partial differential equation. What's the good of that? You are not going to use that to anything. Well, that's a good exercise. Or writing the Sudoku, that's another good exercise. So uh, I don't know, people have a different opinion. Some people take it super seriously. Some people don't see that makes sense. But my job, again, I just want to try to, in my standard, fail to present what we have, okay, what the Chinese, ancient Chinese have it, and then uh, it's up to you. To how to read it. Okay. So we have a Kevin and Alex. Kevin, please. Uh, Kevin, you are muted. You have to unmute yourself. Oh, you cannot unmute. 
Let me see. Okay, so right now you can unmute yourself. Kevin. Okay, now I'm live. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, I like this, uh, you know, five normals. It's a uh, first place from is uh, element. It's, uh, the Jing, I try, sorry guys, maybe uh, uh, as the Chinese, we, we, I guess it's so, it's like, uh, we kind of every day you say Jing Mung Sui Huo Tu. For me, we, we know that Xiang Sen, we can overcome one to another one, uh, generate another one, one another. But how I, I, the element itself makes sense. But for, for example, for uh, wood, um, you generate the uh, fire. Mm -hmm. So I, the spring generate summer is kind of oh, okay, out of spring and summer. However, not the two south, you see, right? A lot of location size. So what's the original thoughts they, yeah. However, you know, you know, I, I'm curious about the original, how they decided this, the process uh, decided this. Like right. we, for example, organ, we go to Xingai Pi Fei Seng, right? We, we know this so by heart, like, yeah. That's a book called Huang Di Nei Jing, right? They, okay. Yeah, they, they have something like this. Oh. And I'm not a uh, big fan of the Chinese medicine. So uh, 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 I, don't know, I, I read some because uh, philosophical interest, okay, my nature curious, I read some, uh, but I usually I just stop on the philosoph philosophical thinking in this part. Yeah, so, but it's still what, what I got, yeah, thank you. What I got is still, it's not like I said, not binary, you stand on one side. We got a, a four direction plus center, right? So you could be each, you stay each direction. It's not, not just, okay, for season, only I like summer or only like a spring. So by, yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, Alex, please. Yeah, actually, I think um, all this um, comes from the big idea of mandate of heaven and how he's trying to um, connect mandate of heaven into you know, how the government or how, you know, the society should work. And I think this is an extension of the mandate of, of heaven. I, I don't know what you think. Well, Alex, it sounds like you, you read my presentation before, because that's what I'm going to do too. And we will see the, get the, uh, this thing. sounds a good idea. And it's, it's, if you go further, you, you will see what's going on. So thank you for coming this one. And I'm going to show more on the, uh, what's further development on this. But before that, let's bring the Dong uh, Zhongshu. Remember, we, I just read uh, about one hour ago, read the uh, Li Si, which is uh, prime minister, uh, 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 legalism, uh, uh, writing the memorial to Qin Shi Huang, his emperor. Okay, to remember, burn the book, kill the people, and blah, 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 all this kind of thing. Let's see how Dong Zhongshu, doing the same thing, submit a memorial to the emperor, which is Han Wu Di, okay, Liu Cheng. Okay. Uh, that's the reading I copy from Sima Qian's uh, writing. Okay, he said, <clears throat> the principle of the great one unity, Okay, I put in blue, that means I have a further explanation later in spring and autumn annals in an unchanging rules all right, uh, in the world and the common expressions through the history. But the teachers of today have a diverse way, which is done. Men have a diverse argument. Each of hundred schools has its own principles and differ in ideas. Hence, your majesty possesses nothing for general unification. The official policy change often and the people don't know what to follow. So remember, up to here, he's talking about the same thing, the great unity, great one unity, okay? Same as Li Si, uh, about 80 years ago, okay? They face the same problem. He described the same situation as Li Si talking to Qin Shi Huang. He's talking about exactly the same situation. People have a different teaching, different idea. 
people don't know what to do, you know, blah, blah, blah. You are the owner of the state, okay? Your majesty basically cannot do anything, okay? So my humble suggestion is this, to ban all field of study except of six classics and the Confucianism. He just banned, okay? Basis, stop government fund to uh, support this one and not hiring the people, okay, for the government. If you are expert of, let's say, legalism or Taoism or a school of names or other things, only hire the people who are good in the six classics, which I'm going to explain later, and the Confucian teaching. In this way, the devious teaching can be stopped. Therefore, the policy will be consistent and the law will be clear and the people will know what to follow. So that's his suggestion, of course, being followed. So that's his way. If you think back what's going on in uh, this uh, memorial to his emperor, okay? This one is much, much mild, okay? And then before we see what's going on, then let's focus on uh, some technical term here. First, six classics, okay? So that's being in the standard text. So book of uh, old, or you want to do classic of poetry, or in Chinese called Si Jing, there's many, many names. Uh, Pin and I discussed yesterday, and I suggest him do one section about Si Jing, okay? Uh, because since that's the oldest book, a lot of, you know, Confucius, if you read the Confucius Analects, uh, Confucius like to quote, and that his disciple also like to quote what Si Jing, the uh, Book of Old said, okay, but I think it's, it's a difficult to present in English, but uh, that means I'm not going to do it, but probably we will try later, and we got a, a better idea. Su, which is the class of history, the book of document on, on Sang Su, okay, it's a collection of the rhetorical prose attributed to figure of ancient China and serve as a foundation of Chinese political philosophy over 2000 years. And the book of change, Yi Jing, okay, class of change. I think we, if you were here last week, okay, uh, Pin is talking about this, right? Ancient Chinese divination text. Book of rights, Li Ji. Okay, that's also important. Okay, the collection of the text describing the social form, administration, uh, celestial rights, and Zhou dynasty as they were understood in the warring state and uh, early Han days. So uh, put this way, okay, I just make it clear. Uh, the book of poetry, book of history, and the book of Yijin, they all exist before Confucius time. So Confucius all quote from this and then comment on this, the G, okay. Uh, I don't know, they have some record and the book probably not uh, doesn't exist until much later time because they have the, some writing is Confucius disciple, disciple basically is Confucius grandson and the grandson's disciple who is Mencius teacher, right? And I think we introduced uh, the great learning beginning of this year, the doctrine of mean, okay, and the great unity, that's last year. Uh, that's the three famous chapter in the book of uh, uh, rights. That's also important. The classic of music, or you want to call book of music. This one has been lost long time. Nobody ever seen this book, but you know, there's a common, according to historian, uh, this book is important to understand the book of poetry. Okay, so uh, since this one is lost, so they make uh, how to read the book of poetry, a classic of poetry, difficult. So that's the sometimes called six classic or five classic because uh, Yue Jing, the, ca the classic of music, is long lost. Uh, a bit of concern about the word the classic, Chinese called Jing. Jing means, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, waps and uh, whoops, right? So if you do the knitting, the vertical called wap, horizontal this way called whoop, okay? So, uh, so they call it Jing. I think another way to understand is the vertical wap, which is stronger 
and the wolf is weaker, kind of more flexible. So I think Jin means something not so flexible, it's a doctrine. So that's my understanding. And I think the WAP's probably another way to uh, explain the meaning of uh, so-called Jin. Okay. So that's the sixth classic. A few old texts on this, okay. So another thing important is the spring and the autumn annals. And I think uh, Pin last week when he talked about the Yi Jing divination, he draw example from the, this book. This one is also ancient book. The annal is the official chronicle of the state of Du okay, in that time. Uh, uh, 500 BC, that's a, at least like a 200 different state in China, but especially the state of Lu, which is a country, Confucius home country. Okay. So he covered 241 year, years period from 722 to 481. It is the earliest surviving Chinese history text to be arranged in an annual form because it was traditionally regarded as being compiled by Confucius. Actually, Mencius say that it's com Conf Confucius compiled this book. The, the annals record main event that occur in Du, the Stelu, during each year, such as the accession, marriage, death, funeral of the rulers, battle fought, sacrificial ritual observed, uh, important celestial phenomena and the nature disaster. The entry are cursely written, average only 10 characters per entry and contains no elaboration on events or recording of speeches. So it's ultra, ultra simple. I'm going to bring an example later, but it's very simple. So during the warring state period of time, a number of commentary to the annals were created that attempt to elaborate on the, or find a deeper meaning in the brief entry in Annals. The commentary of Zhuo, so-called Zhuo Zhuan, okay, is the best known of this commentary because the class is, is its own right. So that's the, why Chun Qiu, okay, so spring and autumn Annals are important as one, one of that. So let me bring one text, okay, so you get a flavor of uh, uh, the uh, spring and autumn annals and how people read this one. So the original text is just this simple. That's the very first text. It said, first year, spring, king, first month. Okay, that's it. So the commentary, which is copied from Gong Yang, that's another commentary. So uh, the English translation is, what is the first year? The ruler's the beginning year. What is the spring? the beginning of a year. Who is the king? The king Wen of Zhou, that's the sage king, the Zhou dynasty, the second, uh, the founder, okay. And who is the king? Why is king before first month? He's talking about why they call Wang Zhengyue, okay, the king first month. Why put the king first month? Because king own the first month. Then further as why? Because great one unity. So. That's the thing you probably see it doesn't make any sense, but that's the text and the commentary. And of course the commentary doesn't make the original text clear. So you need more commentary on the commentary. So that's the typical, it's not only in China or the ancient texts have this kind of situation, but that's the way, you know, people read it and the great one unity become important uh, during that time because they are thinking about the unity of the uh, China, the country. Okay, so they are thinking about. So later on, I'm going to, here we are going to talk about the so-called uh, old school and the old text school and the new text school. So uh, the situation is the so-called new text school, basically Dong Zhong Su, it belongs to the scholar of the new text school, a school of thought in Confucianism that was based on Confucian classics recompiled in the early Han dynasty by Confucians who survived the burning of book and the burying of scholars during the Qin dynasty. 
the survivor wrote the classic in the commentary, a contemporary character of their time, which is Han. And this text was later dubbed as new text because the, uh, the burning of the book, burying of scholars. So uh, a lot of the text, the text all lost. Uh, Dong Zhong Su, okay, at that time, they find the old people, okay, they probably memorized when they were young, have them memor uh, recite, write it down. I think the number is 70 old people, something like this. They write down, compare, and uh, compile. So that's so called the new text school. So they are writing in the text in, during that time in the Han Dynasty. And later on, they had the uh, old text school find out. Basically, they find out in Confucius' hometown, they have a lot of uh, text, okay, book find out, and which is written in the old uh, style of a character. So of course it's broken, people uh, uh, decide this and decode the, the text and uh, write it down. So some versions of the five classics discovered during the Han Dynasty is a much later time, okay? Written in the archaic uh, character and uh, supposedly produced before the burning of the book. So, so that's why you start have the old school and uh, old text school and the new text school. So the importance of the spring and the autumn annals, <coughs> we know Zuo Zhuan is the traditional one. So we have the Gongyang, which Dong Zhong Su is using this one. That's the new text school. And the later on, they have the old text school, which is so-called the Gu Liang Zhuan. So the Gongyang, Gongyang is uh, Gong Yang Zhuan is the uh, central work of new text, which advocated Confucius as an institutional reformer instead of the, just a scholar. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so uh, the spring and autumn end as an embodiment of Confucius' holistic version on political, social, and moral issue instead of the merely chronicle. So Gong Yang Zhuan gives the meaning of the commentary, just like the text I show. Okay. Any text, they just give some ideology of the unity of the Confucius teaching on that. Later on, they have the book called Gu Liang Zhuan. That's a different commentary on the same spring and autumn uh, annals. It is traditional attribute writer with the surname Gong Liang. In the day. So claim he is a disciple of the Zixia. Zixia is one of uh, Confucius' disciple, and which is famous of his uh, writing. But the version of his name varies, okay? So it's more on the, uh, it happened on the later Han dynasty. According to Feng Youlan, his opinion, Okay, I think it's interesting. He said that the Gong Yang, which is new text, and the Gu Liang, which is old text, represent <coughs> two different uh, schools in Confucius. The Gong Liang, which is idealistic school, and the Gu Liang, the old text school, represent the uh, practical uh, uh, I, uh, school instead of uh, uh, ideal school. So that's two different schools. That's his uh, suggestion. Uh, let's put a question mark on that. Uh, when we go further, you probably will know. So I think so we have enough here. And before we move to introduce the uh, philosophers, and let's see if uh, you have any question or comment about this text. I think this one is a little bit dry, but basics that's necessary and important in the Chinese uh, classic, especially in the Confucius during this time. So uh, Madeline and the fear, Madeline, please. Yes. Um, okay, so my question is about this. So the new text school, those are the people who rewrote the destroyed works from memory Yes. And okay. And so it just so happened that the destroyed works that they remembered were more mentious inclined. In other words, human nature is good. Whereas the people who discovered the old texts uh, that were from the earlier period and somehow had survived intact, those texts somehow were more inclined towards the 
on Fay, human nature is bad school of thought? Well, I would have to say no on this because they are different, more subtle than this. Okay, so it's more on the, they all related to the heaven. Okay, so if you read the, uh, I hope this might mis, uh, mislead you, uh, everyone on this, because they, that's the original text. And then they start put a commentary on that. So the old text school and the new text school, basics, they have the same text of this, but they put a different commentary on this. So uh, I think according to Feng Yolan's writing, the new, new text school are more, actually both, okay, but more considered Confucius as a reformer, okay. And the, the old text school probably more on the heaven demand, okay, more superstitious. I, I'm not very sure, but that's the subtle difference on that. But probably not much talking about human nature is good, human nature is bad, not this kind of uh, apparent difference, more on the uh, very subtle difference related to the mundane of heaven, this kind of thing. So it's a, it's a subtle difference okay, on that. Very similar to when you go to Christian in the Middle Ages, where you talk about heresy, they have the different kind of heresy, but they all very different, uh, very subtle different. They all believe Jesus is God, but how different to relate it to God and the Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So, you know, th this kind of difference. Uh, fear, Jen, uh, fear, C uh, James and the CK, fear, please. Yeah, I, I find this thought a very, very interesting because normally when, when, when I think of it, at least in modernist terms, I'll contrast that uh, with the Chinese, is that, for instance, our constitution is written in certain things, but it, it sort of, it, it's reinterpreted and manifest in a new way, in a new interpretation. Not that the Chinese don't have interpretation, but the way I see it, they were very, very interested in the classics, you know? And what is the classics? And, and to me, it sound, the way they look at it almost sounds very Jewish in this sense. I mean, the, the classics are the Chinese concept of the Torah, which is written in uh, sort of a incomprehensible language in a sense, right? And that, but the Torah has its manifestation in the Tamilit, <laughs> which allows you to interpret it. And that transformation allows you to interpret it within a structure of the backbone of the classics, but you could constantly change. So there is change in it, but it always goes back to the central uh, classic, which is the backbone that you could revise and revise, but it remains sort of steady in, in the sort of the center pole of what the classics is. It sounds very interesting because it does allow for transformation, but the transformation has to stay within the gravitational pole of the Torah, so to speak, of the classics. Yeah. Very interesting because you would think, uh, you would think that this top down or whatever this thing is the Chinese have is going to freeze up into a structure, which I still believe it, it does to a certain degree, but it does allow for liberalization of continued uh, transformation interpretation of what it means uh, as long as it stays within the gravitational field. Yeah, thank you, Phil. Actually, uh, it's a, it, I should say, should not say exactly, but basically it's very Jewish. It's common. Yeah another version of Tom. So basics, that, that, that's exactly my, my feeling when I see this, when I, well, actually I know this before I know Tom. So every time I say, come on, that's the same idea of the ancient Chinese is doing. So uh, James, please. That's, that's a good idea. Kind of the uh, reinterpretation of uh, texts. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, I like what Feng 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 Yuan says. He says that uh, that this is a, this is really the new new text is the idealist interpretation of Shen Li uh, Shen Yu, and then there's a uh, 
and then there's a more Mencius, uh, uh, or there's a realist interpretation. That's Shandu. And uh, the, uh, and the, it's kind of reminds me a little bit, uh, and that the, 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 the uh, realist interpretation is more of a naturalist interpretation. In other words, when we talk about naturalism uh, today, we mean that we're not going to resort to religion or idealism to uh, kind of make judgments about the affairs of reality, the affairs of man. In other words, things are going to work out in their own way. And uh, we're not going to look at whether the good guys won or the bad guys won because we know that we're prejudiced towards our own viewpoint. So, so that's kind of the, uh, the naturalistic element or the, uh, the uh, old school. And then the new school, which was relying on uh, uh, retranslation uh, to, to new characters, to new characters was um, basically, uh, and this was caused by the Jin, the, the, uh, the burning, I suppose, but the, but the, the, the ones that uh, were more natural, the more that ones that were more idealistic inclined were kind of in this, uh, well, that's bad, that's good. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, we have to decide, you know, whether uh, just how good this is and if it's a lot better than that, you know, and so forth. So that's kind of the idea of nat naturalism, nat uh, idealism, whereas the realist uh, old text would be kind of, uh, uh, well, he said this and this works because of this or it doesn't work because of that, you know, and, uh, but we can just simply take a hint from, um, uh, take, take our hints from uh, nature. Yeah. Uh, thank you, okay. thank, thank you, James. But I gotta give you somebody a hint on this uh, because it's called very political, okay? Not totally scholastic. So, uh, Phil, please. Yeah, I, I, I kind of have, a, in some sense, an objection to the new text because <laughs> that's not like the relationship that uh, Tamla to to the Torah. Because <laughs> if you found the traditional backbone, which is is the classic, and then you created a new classic because it's based on the other thing, because things are burned but now you rediscover it. Have you not moved the goalposts? I mean, <laughs> I mean, like that is not just a reinterpretation, but the, the backbone remained in the old goalposts. I mean, so, so there's something kind of wrong that that particular move, because there's no longer that relationship between the classic, because the classics has moved the goalposts. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Phil. You know, and uh, then I hope you stay to the end. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> uh, they are much more political than you thought. So, <laughs> so okay, let's move on. Okay, so uh, I try to at least cover to another two great guys and not being uh, mentioned much enough. Okay, for sure, enough in Chinese history and also in the Western. And I find out they are important and it really represents what kind of people during that time, the Chinese, what time they thought. Okay, so right now, remember right now, let's shift the time with the uh, new text school, old text school we're talking about during this time. Let's just skip over to around the first century. Okay, okay, still in the Western heart during around this time. See what's going on. You see that right now we fast forward about 100 years. Okay, the person Yang, Yang Xiong, Okay, he, again, he's short guy, he's a stutterer, okay. He's a philosopher, poet, politician, okay. He is famous for three things famous. First of his so-called Fu poetry. That's one style of poetry I'm going to explain later. Just remember the term. And his writing called the exemplary saying, uh, Chinese called Fa Yan, it's a philosophical writing model on the analects of Confucius. He used the style of Confucius to write uh, his philosophy. And he created a book called Great Mystery, Tai Xuan, a division textbook uh, based on the book of change, Yi Jing. He kind of rewrite Confucius' analect, rewrite okay, uh, 
易经的 book of change. Oh, you can see this kind of and he create. Uh, I should not say he invent, but basically he created the new style of literature writing, so called fu, which is very. Uh, so I think in English called rap study. I'm not very. I'm not very sure what that mean in English, but some people may know better. But I try to find out. It's difficult. Huh. Okay, so that's it. This one, if you remember last year, Pin make a presentation about um, the old of the Red Cliff. Okay, so that's the style of Fu. Okay, that's a different writing style. It's a mix of poetry and the prose. Okay, so it's Chinese literature form combining elements of poetry and the prose. Its verse structure is freer than that of the classical Chinese poem and the rhyme. Pattern less restrictive, so it's a mixture of long and the short line, and then with the different, you know, Chinese language have tone or deal with tone, so it become between music and the writing. So it's hard. You we, we require the whole section. Uh, it's difficult, and I just bring back your memory. If you were in this group last year, uh, you probably remember the full of the Red Cliff. Which is written a thousand years later, okay, uh, probably eleven hundred years later after Yang Xiong, uh, that's Su Dongpo. Is that that's the style writing and the basics mix with the poetry and the prose, and the, this one become the one of the most famous uh, literature uh, work piece of work in Chinese history. So Su Dongpo, I did, I believe, uh, we will have chance to see this kind of writing before, but. You can remember. You can see how important of this person, Yang Xiong. He kind of like started this kind of writing and being used over the next thousand years. So, and another thing we talk about his book called Exemplary Exemplary Saying, so called Fa Yan. Okay, if you are in the Chinese, uh, the Ch Confucius Analytic Reading Group. Uh, you probably have an idea how the uh, uh, Confucius ended up, but he kind of mimic the style. So I just make the translation for his thirteen chapters, and each one is a dialogue. Some person asks question, then he have answer question, answer question, answer just like uh, and so basically talk about uh, the master, the learning and the practice, cultivation itself. Ask about Tao. Okay, so get a little bit flavor of heaven and earth, more uh, metaphysical than Confucius. Analog. You will see something like uh, asking about the enlightenment, asking about the spirit, asking about the Tao. Okay, so talk about Junzi, which is the more, and talk about Xiao, okay, the filial piety. So it's kind of like rewrite. Confucius teaching with some yin yang metaphysical thought and put in the same format. So think about this kind of person who created literature writing, which can be used for next thousand years, who kind of rewrite, okay, the Confucius analog. Okay. Mm -hmm. And another thing is just kind of remind you last week, that's a copy from Pin's present talk about the Yi Jing definition, right? Uh, I assume everybody know Yin and the Yang. You do the tri, uh, <coughs> the trigram. Okay, so you have eight different represent the nature phenomena, and you put A by A. Okay, you have Yin and Yang. You got the sixty four, and each one have a definition, right? They have a six line. Each line have a comment. Then you can do a lot of things. You know, you can put the uh, use for definition. You can put the uh, moral teaching on that, you know, put the metaphysical on that. So that's the tradition book, okay? Confucius is study. Confucius put the uh, a commentary on that. So Confucius even said, at 50 years old, you can study book of change. So it's kind of very, very old book. So he write another book, okay, called Tai Xian, Great Mystery. Instead of yin and the yang, he put the three things, heaven, earth, and the humankind. So that's one line, two broken line, three broken line. 
So you put the four, you said the four direction, north, south, east, and west. So four lines. So the three times three times three times three, so 81. So he created 81, okay? So he called the Jiu Gong Nine Palace. So create another book, okay? Have the commentary, blah, 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 blah. So that's he create this one. So I think this person is important. Even we don't study the great mystery, okay? The Tai Xian, we don't read the Fa Yan, which is exemplary say, just like we read Confucius. And I take a read some of them. It's pretty good, okay? Pretty good writing. So you can see this kind of very creative person and doing this kind of job. So that's the person I think we is worth it to give him some credit, okay, to do that, okay. So because he did anyway, amazing job in my point of view. So, uh, any comment before we move on? No, that's great. Well, I I do have a comment actually. Oh, please, okay. <laughs> it, it it just seems to me, uh, what you just showed there is that. Uh, creativity cannot be repressed by any system because there'll be another system. That, 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 that's very interesting. I mean, they, there, there's a way to accept creativity. So, so is, you, you can't, you could sort of plug it up to, to a certain degree, but it will just burst out in some form. So thank you for that. Well, thank you, Phil. And how about I tell you, he has a political purpose. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Well, Let's do that. Okay, so uh, 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 okay, and then the reason I make this one is I when because I a little bit disappointed, well not disappointed, uh, and this book, the uh, Feng Yulan's book, he just put the uh, Yang Xiong, just put two words on that and no further comment. So uh, I think he is, if you want to study philosophy, I think he is important, but. You know, I just try to give some credit. So, uh, Madeline and the CK. Uh, Madeline, are you able to unmute? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm here. Um, so, my question is uh, so, this new system, this 81, didn't really seem to catch on. Uh, and how was it related to the politics of, of the Thai? Uh, that humankind was introduced instead of just heaven and earth. Yeah, you, if you look at close, are you able to see it? Uh, when you look at the close, they have the some, instead of yin and yang, right? The sum has a three line. So that's the earth, human, heaven, and uh, human, a different kind of combination. Yeah, um, so <laughs> this, apparently this, at least it's not certainly not as well known uh, here in the West as oh. as a regular one. Um, did it just not catch on very much in China, or do people did did it become as popular as the sixty four? Uh, yeah, I I know in the uh, Song Dynasty, Zhou um, Dun Yi, uh, some uh, there's a, a Neo Confucian scholar put a comment on this one. Uh, but I believe we take a survey in the pan Chinese society, Taiwan, Hong Kong, China, Korean, uh, if they say, probably not a lot of people know this, okay? So uh, it's, uh, they have the political reason, okay? Again, <laughs> so, okay, so uh, it's, I just want to show this one. And then that's another, probably if you get an idea, say that's what use. 10, uh, find the 10 things, then that's create another kind, yi jing kind of thing. You know, yeah, you probably can do that. Okay. Uh, CK, please. Um, what, what, was the, what was the political reason at the time that it didn't catch on? Okay, not happened yet. I'm going to tell the next section. <laughs> okay, uh, 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 CK, please. Yes, I'm, I'm just equally intrigued because I've heard of Yang Xiong uh, in, in you know, my readings, but I have not really read a lot about him. 
um, and his philosophy. It seems to be the case that, like, like you said, when Feng Yulan just had uh, the two sentences on him. Oh, two words. Uh, oh, two words on him, yes. Uh, which probably says a lot with two words, as the Chinese would do. You know, they would just say something very little with a lot. Hopefully that's the case. Yeah. But uh, for Yang Xiong, I'm wondering why he's, he's not that well known in the Chinese world. You know, if you, if you talk to Chinese people and you mention Yang Xiong, I don't think that many people will yeah. instantly have an idea of okay. what he represents. It's, okay, uh, thank you. That's why I'm going to bring up this one. Yeah. Because, uh, another person called Liu Xin, are you familiar with him, uh, CK? Liu Xin, uh, I think he's one of the royals of the uh, Han Dynasty, right? Is yeah, he? Because they all close related, uh, they close to Wang Mang. So, uh, if we relate to Wang Mang, it's not so good. Doesn't no matter how good you are. So. <laughs> I've heard of him, but I don't know a lot of what he said. You know? Okay, so let's move on. Okay, since you bring up this subject, let's move on for the, another person, and I probably will end with this person and answer Madeline and uh, Fields' question about political reason. So Liu Xin is another great guy. Uh, I think so we owe him uh, uh, credit. Okay, so on that. So he born about 50 uh, BC to pass the uh, first century. Okay, he is old tech school. Again, in later time, a lot of scholars claim there's no old tech school. It's totally fake. Okay, it's created by Liu Xin. Okay, his job is librarian. He and his father are the librarian for the royal library. So probably, I don't know. Okay, I just present the a lot of debate on that. Uh, I think famous, if you're familiar with the Chinese, in Kang Yu Wei uh, in the 19th century, he has a famous writing called Xin Xue Wei Jing Kao. Okay, basically he is talking about Liu Xin created the old text school text, okay, basics for the purpose of helping. He's a good friend of Wang Mang, okay, to help Wang Mang to overturn the Han Dynasty, okay. So that's, of course, people still argue against Kang Yu Wei because he argue against Liu Xin, he has his own political purpose because he want to help the, the Qin dynasty, Qin, not the later 19th century Qin dynasty. So they all political related. So uh, it, it's hard. I don't want to make my point here. How do I think? I don't know. I'm not interested on that. I'm more interested on the, how people think about things, what they really do, okay? So this is people talk about the old text school is totally fake because he and his father created which I believe is very possible, okay? And he is a great calendar scientist. He created a new set of calendar, can it's a mix of the lunar, uh, lunar system and the solar system. And he probably the world's first library, library classification. He put a very good classification system. He calculated the period of the Jupiter as the 11, 8, 0.86 years. Basically, that's why the 12th Norman, 12th years cycle coming out. Okay. So another thing he calculated for the pi, the value of pi is 3.147. It's very close. I put this one half, okay, later. So with his father, Liu Xiang, okay, is the author of the classic of mountain and sea. Okay, again, uh, remember in uh, Alex uh, talking about Qin Dynasty, Chinese have an old book during the Warring State or have the classic, the so-called San Hai Jin. I'm going to show this one. Okay, I took from Alex's presentation, talk about different things, you know, that's a great book. There's some people talk about, of course, we don't know because he and his father, editor, or edited or created, we don't know. But basics, that's a lot of thing about this. So, and his friend, good friend with Wang Mang. Remember his last name is Liu. Okay, during the Han, his royal family. All right, so, but he is distant. So, uh, uh, so he has to work, all right. So uh, he, 
why people don't like him because well, I mean traditional China not put enough tradition uh, credit for him because he is one man's very good friend because both are great Confucian scholar and then they are they probably best friend even later he helped uh, one man to overturn Han Dynasty or usurp Han Dynasty. Uh, but later on, you know, uh, one man forced him because he against one man later when he got killed at the age of 70, I think. Yeah. So back to his achievement, the pi 3.15. I'm curious, just like I mentioned before, I always want to look at the old text, see how he described the pi. And I find out actually he he make this one. This one is in the Taiwan the, uh, National uh, the Museum. Okay, so this one he make it for as a measurement for the so called ten ten dan. Okay, uh, dan is the measurement is to measure the volume. So basically, he precisely describe the volume is exactly ten and the height and the length and everything. So based on this, we reverse engineer. We say he, he must know. And in other texts later at time, in uh, next section, we'll talk about another scientist, Wang Chong. He recalculate okay, the value of pi. So his way of calculating is probably more empirical than theoretical. He probably do a lot of measurement to figure out, okay, that's the, the, the value. So that's the way he do it in his work. And then, uh, so we will talk about a little bit more about the uh, five elements he's talking. And then uh, I think I will stop here for today. And then uh, I'm, I think that I'm on schedule, but that's a little bit I will do next week. i would say for, we up to here, Liu Xin, and the next week we will talk about Wang Man, who basically is good friend of Liu Xin, and he's prime minister. He usurped, okay, he take over Han, and so he created the uh, Xin Dynasty. Back to my point, this dynasty is totally based on radical Confucianism. Okay, the Han style of Confucianism with yin yang, heaven, this kind, five element, this kind of thing. He created a new dynasty. And this new dynasty basically failed, shorter than the Qin dynasty. Qin dynasty lasted for 15 years. And this dynasty lasted for 14 years, one year short, even a little bit shorter than, and also caused a lot of problems. And then we have the restoration of the, uh, uh, the uh, Han dynasty. So that's the story of the, uh, I will call it the uh, Confucian revolution. And uh, then uh, I will put the uh, philosophy history for the next time. That's the Liu Xin's uh, idea. So, um, uh, so basically today we cover the first part, the before first century. And the next week we will cover the after first century and the two uh, great scholar, Wang Chong, who I think, uh, and uh, Zhang Heng. Zhang Heng is more famous known in Chinese, also in Western, because when uh, Western, people, Western scholars study Chinese technology development, Zhang Heng is one of the important person. Wang Chong is not as popular because he's uh, skepticism. Okay, in general, Chinese doesn't like skepticism much. So Wang Chong is not that popular, but I think it does deserve to describe uh, the person Wang Chong uh, in the next week. So we will end the section today. That's open for some discussion and then uh, thank you everyone. Uh, Phil and Alex, Phil please. Yeah, I have two comments about Lucian. I mean, it's, it sounds very interesting because my, my first comment is that this uh, this cylindrical vessel that he did, in a sense, to measure pi or whatever he did, no, sounded it, not the purpose for major pi. Purpose of major the volume, okay. But based on this, we know he probably know the value of pi. Yeah, my comment is this sounds so much like Archimedes. 
uh-huh. <laughs> you know, who who had to figure out whether the uh, king's crown was gold or whether there was a mixture, and he went in the bathtub, and, and then and then he went through the streets naked, shouting "Eureka!" because he, he he talked about displacement. So that was the first comment. So, and and that is that roughly does match the period of time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the but, other comment I have is that. Uh, you you kind of ruined it at the old text and the new text because I was cheering for the old text, but if this is a fake, which may or may not be actually, you know. I don't know. I, I just present. There's some yeah. people say that's a fake. Okay, but yeah. people, there's some doubt about it. Yeah. But but what but what it tells me is that you know the structure of uh, of understanding of power, how you want to put it. It's actually based on politics, not metaphysics. Right? <laughs> I mean, that's the disappointment you gave me. Is like, yes, uh, politics is the grounding for all everything. So I'm not, I, I'm not liking that. But okay, I'll accept that if that's the case. <laughs> but I, I hope you don't be uh, feel disappointed because even if it's totally fake, right? It's, they fake it 2,000 years ago, so still classic, even if it's fake. So but still worth it to start. <laughs> well, but it's not classic like <laughs> the original classic text, <laughs> which is trying to, so this is a fake classic. Uh, I mean, if it's fake, so okay, all right, <laughs> I accept your thing, that politics, and that, and, and that does actually apply to the, modern, uh, the contemporary age because we think of all this scientific development and all that, which is true, we have that, but depends who gets the funding. <laughs> anyway, yeah, thank you for the comment. And then uh, Alex, please. Yeah, um, my question is, the other schools of thought after the Qing Dynasty seems still uh, never really come back. The only um, school that really came back was Confucius and probably Taoism. And then divination has always, uh, I just want to share this with everyone, divination in Chinese history, especially during that time from Zhou Dynasty to China, you know, all, the, all, all of them believe in divination. So I'm not surprised that, you know, they want to use divination because especially the emperor, you know, they, they you know, from the idea of mandate of heaven, they want to know what's going on with the, 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 the heaven and try to try to predict the future with these divinitions. So I you know think it survived quite well. But then you know bringing Confucius back, isn't it another form of of you know forced thought as well? Just like you know Emperor Qing, he only adopted legalism and not the other schools. So it's you know I, I, that's just what I think. Yeah, thank you, Alex. And I think next week we will go more on the uh, uh, the, the, the definition and then more on the maintain of heaven. Okay, so uh, basics Wang Mang. Okay, who based on this and he claimed uh, just take the throne. Okay, so and but he based on the Confucius teaching. Okay, Confucius said that's the right way to do it. Okay, so I'm yeah, going. But my question is, why, why did Confucius, the school of Confucius, you know, came back so strong after, after the, you know, and after the Qing Empire fell? Yeah, I think that uh, Feng Yulan's book talk about this because uh, it's a fail and the new family, which is Han, restore it, okay? And at that time, okay, they start to, uh, 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 Adopt the ideology. Adopt. They still continue to adopt the ideology, but you know they use the same mandate of heaven to clear up the thought. But get more practical, less superstitious. Okay, so that's a start to change. And another thing, another thought being changed after Xin Dynasty is before that, a lot of people still thinking about the able person or the person hold high moral standard mm. will be the emperor, not that much as the family, okay? So 
Uh, after that, people start to think more on the family run business as the dynasty. That's a Feng Yulan's writing. And uh, I never thought this way, but when I get the close read on the uh, Confucius Anodec, I think in book three and in our group, I haven't do it yet. Confucius, the, stand, the student asked very funny question. He asked, can we know about the 10 dynasty? So in Confucius thought, the dynasty will keep changing. He's not thinking about like one dynasty keep long forever. He's not thinking about that. This kind of thought probably after Xin dynasty get overturned, people start to build the idea like, okay, that's a dynasty that have to last forever and we have to preserve it. But again, that's not my thought. Basically, that's what I read from Feng Yulan's writing and the kind of reflect on this kind of thinking. I'm not sure. Yeah. I totally agree or not agree because I'm not interested on that at all. I only interest on the philosophical thinking. But you know, right. just for the reasons. Yeah. But but I, I think maybe it has to do with Confucius always talking about how great the Zhou dynasty was, the the yeah. the stages. So yeah, okay. Oh, I think you will you will see if it's, uh, I come here next week. Uh, we I plan to talk about how Wang Mang put Confucius teaching in practice, okay? And then uh, they fail, but how, I don't, we, we can talk about this. Uh, CK, Madeline and Jim, CK, please. Okay, yes, uh, this uh, whole uh, saga regarding the old text and the new text reminds me a lot about Karl Marx's fate and also the fate of the Buddha. Uh, if you look at Karl Marx, you know, there are a lot of disputes amongst Marxist scholars about what, who is the real Marx and what he really, really meant. Do we look at the Communist Manifesto? Do we look at Das Kapital or, or what? So recent Marxist scholars have rediscovered Marx in the sense of uh, digging up the Grundrisse and the uh, Marx's early notes when he was in Paris to give a different picture of, of, of Marx and what Marx really meant before uh, you know, the interpretation by Lenin and, and Stalin and all these other uh, uh, Soviet leaders. So that's, that's one area which, I, which reminds me of, uh, of Marx and also the Buddha. I mean, the Buddha wouldn't agree with all these Buddhist sects that came later after him. But the Mahayana or the Tarayana or Tibetan Buddhism or you know Zen Buddhism or Chan Buddhism or, or, or all kinds of splitties. I think the Buddha only believes in his the enlightened being, and that's the central core of it. Anything else is a divergence, but because of various different interpretations, the, the whole uh, so-called Buddhist movement split into all these different factions. And in, in the case of, uh, of, of, of why the Han dynasty uh, would like, would have a Confucianist. I mean, in, in Chinese, there's a saying, Qin shi qi lu, tian xia gong zhu zhi, when the Qin empire lost the deer, meaning the main dead of heaven, the rest of the whole of all under heaven has the ability or the privilege or the right to go and get the man mandate of heaven themselves. And this justifies Liu Bang's ascendance to be the emperor because he, he took the, uh, the, the deer, the man mandate of heaven from Qin. And in order to keep it, he needs a way to keep it. So again, I, I fabricate uh, the old text myself here. I have another saying, say, Han de qi lu, zun ru yi zhi zhi. This whole thing is fake by me. You know, I created this whole sentence. But maybe a thousand years later, when somebody dig up my grave, maybe they will see this and it will be another uh, form of dispute over what happened then. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I, I will keep this one in the uh, YouTube. So, you know, a thousand years later, people will probably review it and then they'll see. <laughs> yeah, but then they don't give me copyright or, or credits. I say, there you go. I use that already, so you probably don't care. But 
Uh, but thank you for mentioning about Karl Marx, because Wang Man we're going to talk about next week. Some people say he's the first Marxist. Okay, so okay, so that's just a, a, a matter. Uh, I believe James was was before me. All right, James and uh, Madeline, you have the final words for today. Okay, thanks, Jason and Madeline. Uh, yeah, the uh, there's this uh, in the book. There's this thing called the uh, wuxi, uh, the weishi, weishi, uh, which is a forgery, the apocrypha, uh, that was written about this time. Um, and uh, there are the six woofs and the six warps, and the uh, and the six yeah, and the and and that just, I, wasn't it wasn't Confucius was one of the classics that was not burnt. Uh, Confused the classic got burned, but remember that's that's why you know the, the story is this it got burned. Okay, it's more complex than this. It's actually Qin Dynasty, they are not totally stupid. They burn the people, but remember the royal library still saved the copy of that. So even they don't like confusion, they save a copy of that. So actually, who really burned it is another guy. Oh, Xiang Yu. Okay, that's uh, we haven't mentioned yet. That's uh, who conquered Qin uh, Palace and the set of fire turned out to burn everything. So the only copy in the royal library had got burned. Okay, so that's the story. And the back to James's question, because the that's a so it's burned, but always have some left. Okay, but then some people remembered. So. New tech school is basically they find the old people who memorize who still memorize the text, just ask them to write it down. You know that's the thing. And old tech school basically the story is they find out you know in the old place ah that's the text let's read it oh that's the one and how come it's different than what you guys talking about? So that's a become different school. I think that's the you know story about this. And then again when I say that's fake, that's just about in 19th century, and actually in early times, already people bring up this object, like it's fake. And if you read the Fong Yolat's book, they put the, at that time, probably that's a popular practice, right? To uh, fake the book, okay? Because he did, San Hai Jing, the classical mountain and sea, it could be fake. And then, you know, we don't know, you know, because it's so long, you know, but, uh, text to me, my my stand, my uh, attitude is, text is text. I don't care it's fake or not fake. I read it. If it makes sense, makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. So that's my attitude. But yeah. I, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to reply to Alex. You know, because the the it seems to me that uh, that this uh, there's a lot of controversy during this century. And uh, with the with the rediscovery of the text, the and the emergence of the new schools, and uh, so that's a tremendous amount of controversy and interest. Also, the forgeries were apparently very important. Or uh, I don't think Feng Yulang would have mentioned them. And uh, you know, they were they were popular reading at the time. And uh, there's a reason for Confucius being popular. It's ethical, ethical reading, which is fairly rare. rare. To find uh, ethical, to find ethical text of that depth, that uh, that is that uh, kind of uh, unassuming and natural seems to seems to be fairly have you know have a natural flow and uh, not be oh, not be over assuming not not kind of like this is the rules if you don't behave like this you know it's wrong no it's kind of like presented in a kind of a, a relatively gentle form to some uh, ethical texts from the 20th century, I think. So okay. that's that's all, yeah. Uh, thank you, okay, so that's, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm not going to accept more hands, okay, so uh, let's try to finish on time, okay. So Madeline, Alex, and the CK, okay, Madeline, please. <laughs> yes, um, well, this, this Liu Xin character sounds really fascinating <laughs> and, uh, Maybe sometime I was thinking it would be really great if you could do uh, a session on his library classification system, because it would be um, it would be a window on how they conceptualize the information available in the world. 
Like, did he do it according to one of the, the list of five systems or length of text or date of writing or alphabetized by author? Like, how did they conceptualize the information that was available to them? So anyway, um, it's a it's a little bit nerdy, but it could be a very interesting window on uh, how they saw the available knowledge. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. You know, and actually, I, a lot of detail uh, 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 we we can go through this one. But in general, I people in Western and the Chinese understanding of the Chinese philosophy usually talk about the six school, hundred school. If that boom seems like nothing happened. Uh, just like uh, I think some of you um, in the uh, Bertrand Russell's read it, just like uh, in Western uh, tradition, right? we talk about the Greek time, then boom, that's the environment. So what's happened during the thousand years, right? So there's uh, something happened. He may not think that's important, but if you dig through, there's a lot of interesting tell you, you know, how we have today. And that's not just jump through thousand years, just fly over because they have a lot of things happen. That's like, uh, I almost interested to present every single person in one section. Uh, I have to uh, be uh, confined, uh, be precise, uh, uh, be, 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 be simplified. Otherwise it would be go too long. So that's the uh, situation. There's a lot of information for this. For, and there's not only these two people, there's a lot of, not a lot, there's a few people, you know, they do trying something which going nowhere, but you know we, we, we can see how what kind of work they are doing. Uh, Alex, please. Yeah, um, I, I want to respond to James a little bit um, that um, the I guess next week we'll hear about the the how Confucianism you know with Wang Man was you know revived again, um, but during the Qin Dynasty or before the Qin Dynasty, Confucius was not popular. His ideas were, were you know, not adopted uh, by any of the states. So um, suddenly after Han Dynasty, it, you know, it, it revives. So I'm interested to hear about that story. Um, and then um, I have a question. Actually, I have a comment. Be previously, you talk about the prose, prose mm -hmm. writing. I thought um, the first prose writer who invented the prose uh, style was Qi Yuan. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. Qi Yuan, that's a very ancient time, but I'm not sure you know, he is doing this way. He's writing kind of in the local language because he is uh, so not he, fu, fu, fu. I talk about Fu, I'm not talking about the poetry. I talk about Fu. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah, I believe I believe he was writing the Fu because he was telling a story there in in his in his book. You know, Zhou Ge, the Nine. It's it's, right. it's you know just to share it with everyone. You know, he the book that he wrote was from the south of China, and they were and he recorded a lot of mystical stories of the south, which is very 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 different from. Uh, uh, the north where all these schools of thought. So he was the first one who wrote the uh, Chinese you know, mythology. Um, and he died right before, he died around 250 BC. So right around the corner of the Qin dynasty. And I believe he was the first one who actually wrote, the, he started the prose. Um, and was one of the best, I, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Alex, you probably can pre prepare one section about this if you are interested. I think that's that's a great to hear. About. Yes, yes, I I sure, yeah. <laughs> and I just remind everybody, the day Qi and Dai we call Duan Wu Jie. That's yesterday. Okay, so right. It's the, the so-called Zongs, and which I call it the Chinese Tamari. Okay, so. <laughs> I ate that, you know, let me show you every year. And so that's what happened yesterday. Yes, it, it was it, it, it's just to show everyone, it's a very important Chinese holiday in, in Asia, not only in China, you know, did, did a you lot eat, of people. Did you eat it yesterday? Yeah, I had, I had one, you know, it was Great. so bad. <laughs> All right, that's good, yeah. Okay, uh, CK, you have the last word, but thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for the last word. I think uh, I just want to say that for all the uh, negative 
uh, commentary that was uh, heaped upon the Qin Dynasty. Okay. There is one thing that cannot be taken away from, from it. It united China and when and it united China because the legalism that it used it to unite China to unite China worked. And when the Qin was around, the Xiongnu never had a chance against the Qin military. Militarily, the Qin was superior to the Xiongnu. And they had no peers around the, the vicinity. The Qin army was the strongest in, in East Asia, easily by a stretch. But when the Han Dynasty came to power initially at the early, st at, at the early stage, it was so weak, it had to literally kowtow, kowtow to the Xiongnu. And uh, the, the first emperor, uh, Liu Bang, was nearly taken captive in uh, Baiteng Shan, Baiteng Mountain by the Xiongnu. So for all the bad things that were said by all these scholars and, 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 and la later generations of historians, about the Qin Dynasty, it held it more than held its own against the, the, the northern nomads, which was a constant threat to, to, to Chinese empires. So for that, I think the Qin Empire deserves its real credit in Chinese history for being able to make China a united country, a strong country, a rich country, and literally with what Fan Zhong said. Fu Guo Chiang Bing, that was what it did. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that depends on uh, which side you state. If, if you, some, some, some may say united is not good, then that's destroy the total story. So, you know, that's another subject we can talk. You know, it's united good or bad, that's another thing. So, uh, uh, this, everybody have a different opinion, depend on, you are in the one or outside the one. In the one, you say United is good. If out of that one, you may say United is good. It's not good because I lost my identity. So that's my opinion. Yeah. But anyway, thank you, everyone. And I will see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.